Hello. Oh, I'm afraid this old compass of mine isn't working very well. You see, this little needle here is supposed to always point this way. But now I think it's broken. But I bet I can fix it. Well, no, I'm not an official compass repairer, but well, it can't be that hard. Let me see. I think I can fix this. Yeah. I need a red screwdriver. No. Yes, this will do it. Now, if I just get it on here. Like this and see. Oh. oh, my dear. Oh, my. Oh, what am I going to do now? Maybe Theodore would know. Why Theodore? Well, because just the other day, Theodore didn't know what to do either. That day began like any other. The dispatcher was giving out the jobs to the tugboats. Borak, I would like you and Theodore to bring in a super tanker. George, you'll be the tug in charge. The three tugs tooted to say, yes, sir. Docking a giant super tanker is just about the biggest job a tugboat can do. And there's nothing a tugboat likes better than a big job. The peaceful morning was suddenly shattered by the sound of a loud emergency horn. And the roar of a powerful engine. Nautilus, the Navy ship, the sleekest, fastest ship in the big harbor, was racing towards the ocean faster than the tugs had ever seen him move before. The tugs were all wondering the same thing. Where was Nautilus going in such a big hurry? As Theodore, George, and Foduck steamed out to meet the super tanker, they couldn't stop talking about Nautilus. He sure was going fast, said George. Nautilus protects the oceans, said Foduck, thinking deeply. Something must be wrong out there. Maybe a giant iceberg is coming into the harbor, suggested Theodore. Or a pirate ship. I know someone who's not coming into the harbor, said George, looking around. The super tanker. Now, the tugs all looked around, expecting to see the giant ship waiting for them at the entrance to the harbor. But he wasn't there. Fodok's radio suddenly crackled. It was the dispatcher calling the tugs. Emergency! radioed the dispatcher. Emergency! Super tanker sinking! Out on the ocean! Proceed immediately! That short message from the dispatcher sent a shiver through the tugs from their bumpers to their bows. The three tugs raced into the harbor at emergency speed, blowing their loudest whistles, the ones that said, ship in trouble, tugboats on their way. The tugs arrived to see a sight they would never forget. mighty super tanker they were supposed to bring in had hit a rock near the Picto Peaks. A dangerous place just outside the big harbor. So that's where Nautilus was going in such a big hurry, said Theodore. I've already checked to make sure he's not leaking oil in the ocean, said Nautilus. But we don't have much time. The rock made a hole in his side, and he's sinking fast. I steered off course, groaned the super tanker, whose name was Canso. I never even saw that rock till I hit it. Is there anything you need? Nautilus called to the tugs. Well, we'll take it from here, replied George. We'll save him, said Theodore. We're trained for these types of emergencies, added Foda. Nautilus backed away from the super tanker. It was up to the tugs to save him now. I'll make sure other ships stay away, he called. George was the tug in charge. He floated as close as he could to the giant super tanker. There's only one thing to do, he announced. We have to pull Canso off this rock.
Fodak, you go to that side. And Theodore, you go to this side. And I'll be in front. Without wasting a beat of their engines, the tugs quickly moved into position around the sinking ship. George began to warm up his powerful engine, getting ready for the tug of his life. Now, he called. When I say pull, pull! Pull! The three tugs heaved on their tow ropes with all their might, but Canso barely budged. Stop! Stop pulling! cried George. Tug stopped to rest a moment. You weren't pulling straight, George frowned at Fodak. I did what I was supposed to do, replied Fodak. Theodore started pulling too soon. No, I didn't. You did, said Theodore. The tugs all began to blow their whistles and talk at once about who should have done what and when. There's no time to argue, roared George. Let's try harder this time. that tanker. Not one bit. Stop! cried Fodak. It's no use. I'm the one who says stop! George glared at Fodak. You started too soon, Theodore said to George. While the tongues all began to talk and tooted each other all at once, a dreadful sound interrupted their argument. The steely scream of twisting metal, the super tanker tilted on his side, deeper into the ocean. Then everything was quiet again, and very still. We must have done that with our pulling, said Theodore quietly. We have another problem, said Fodak. The sun is going down. Sure enough, it was beginning to get dark. It's going to be a lot harder to save Kanso in the dark, Fodak continued, and much more dangerous. Theodore and George knew Fodak was right. With all those rocks around there, the tugboats would be in danger of hitting them too. If we all pull together, said George, one big pull, we can yank them free. We already tried that, George, said Fodak. And it didn't work, added Theodore. Well, that's the only way we know how to move a ship, said George. For one terrible moment, it really did look like Kinso, the world's biggest super tanker, would sink. Can someone please do something? said Kinso. It was a very small sound from such a mighty ship. By the terrible silence that followed, it was clear that the tugboats didn't know what to do. I think, Theodore said slowly, I think I have an idea. Everyone turned to Theodore. Theodore was always great at thinking up plans. I think, continued Theodore, we should ask Nautilus. Nautilus knows more about what to do in the ocean than anyone. The tugs were silent for a moment. No one had even thought of asking someone else for help. But there didn't seem to be anything else they could do. Without another word, Theodore went to ask Nautilus. returned together. Nautilus cruised around Kenso, looking very carefully. This way and that. 
while the tugs held their breath. Have you tried pulling sideways? Nautilus said at last. Sideways? repeated George. We never pull ships sideways, said Fodok. I think it might work, said Nautilus. We have to try, shouted Theodore. Let's do it, said George. The tugs got into place again, and Nautilus gave the order. Ready? Pull! The tugs pumped heavy fuel into their engines, made their toughest tugging faces, and began to pull. Pull as hard as they could. Sideways. Well, at first, Canso didn't move. But then, he began to rock a bit. Just a little at first. Steady, cried George. Steady! The tugs groaned under the heavy weight of the super tanker. Their tow ropes strained to breaking as they muscled against the ship. Now, Canso was moving. He began to slide over the rocks. Pull! 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 George's voice was as hard as steel as he seemed to will the tugs to pull harder than they ever thought they could. For one terrible moment, Canso teetered on top of that rock. The tugs gave one last mighty heave, and with a great splash, Canso was back in the water where he belonged. As soon as the tugs caught their breath, they prepared to pull Canso into the harbor. They knew still it wasn't going to be easy steering the injured giant safely through the rocks in that moonless night. But this time, they knew exactly what to do. Otilus, will you lead us into the harbor? asked Theodore. Follow me, called Nautilus. Yes, it would be a big job bringing in the great super tanker, but there's nothing a tugboat likes better than a big job. story gave me an idea about okay. what to do with this broken compass of mine. See, maybe before I try doing something that I've never tried to do before, like repair a compass, maybe I should find out what to do first. And where is it? Here it is. Official compass repairs instructions. This will tell me all about how to fix my broken compass. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. Oh, this doesn't look too hard. Ah. Oh. 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 I wonder if Nautilus knows how to read instructions. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs>